Guys, I lost the Raph Bomber. Yeah, come on. I mean, Alright, I lost my Raph Bomber. Right nah, I'm just playing. It's right there. Hey guys, it's Andy and welcome to another episode of my pickups video. So, last video of my pickups did really well. And to be completely frank, those weren't necessarily 2024 pickups precisely because they are actually late 2023 pickups that I sort of posted in 2024. So for convenience sake, I just named it like pickups 2024. But this is the actual real 2024 spring pickups. So hope you guys enjoy. So let's start with the first item. So you guys already saw in the, in the little teaser I offered, but like, here it is. It's the Raf Bomber. Actually, let me move myself. Yeah, there we go. This is the Raf Simmons Prada Bomber. It's his first collection back in 21, I believe. And uh, a lot of people have told me that they hate this sort of collar, but I personally love it. It's this like very knit, like crochet kind of feel, and it feels like like a grandma sweater. But I personally feel like uh, this is a. Uh, a very nice bomber that Raf made and it's very like iconic because this was the talk of the town when he released his first collection over at Prada and uh, me and my boy Kim Kor have been like glazing like Prada and like Miu Miu and like how well they've done like uh, in the past few years so this is just one of my favorite pieces from recent Prada so yeah this is the first item I wanted to show you guys so this bomber has actually been one of the pieces that I've been eyeing because, I don't know, it's so iconic of contemporary Prada. And so, yeah, it's just, the story of picking it up isn't actually that special. You scroll through Grailed a lot, you, um, you DM your friends. Uh, yeah, not gonna lie, this was uh, a connect. A friend of mine is like really into collecting Prada. And so he had this very iconic piece in like, I think two colors but he was only willing to let me have this color. So I ended up picking this. Uh, one of the my favorite details is actually this Prada triangle pocket on the bomber. It kind of feels like a, like, a, like a mini purse on your shoulder. It's just like so crazy on like your arm, I guess. It's this mini, mini purse. And I feel like it's so cool. And I really, really like the wearing it around and like putting my AirPods in. This is my, like solely my AirPods holder. I'm gonna be completely straight with you all. And uh, yeah, this is the first pickup, I guess. There's not much to say. Like, I like the colors. I like this crochet thing detail at the bottom. And uh, I like Wrath. I guess I uh, ought to do some like professional YouTuber shit and like explain like certain details. Uh, first of all, like the zipper here uh, is super premium. It actually uses like a very, very premium and thick zipper that I really, really enjoy. It makes this like a really satisfying sound. Moreover, like the, the snap buttons on the pockets are also very clean. They're like traditional Prada snap buttons. And I feel like, I don't know, this piece just like, it has a gravitas towards it since it's like Raf's first piece. And I know, I think they've done like similar pieces ever since, but it just doesn't hit the same, you know? The first Raf Simmons bomber, Prada bomber hits way harder than, you know, like the fifth, you know what I mean? You know, Raf is a massive deal. And so his first collection was like heavily broadcasted like all over Instagram. So this was definitely one of the pieces that uh, like I had my eye on ever since like the runway. And now being finally able to, you know, have my have my grimy hands on it feels very surreal to me. And so, yeah, uh, I'm gonna shout out the homie. You know who you are. Thanks for the Raf bar. <laughs> for my Kenajima fans out there, you do do not ID my suitcase and find my my coat. I will be wearing this shit, so you will not take this off my body. I tell you that much. <laughs> this is probably what I'm gonna use to clickbait you guys in, because this is the ultimate grail, I guess. So, uh, uh, for for the motherfuckers that like to pocket watch, uh, I'm not gonna tell you how much I pay for this, but. Uh, no, it's like under what grailed fuckers want for it. So yeah, the first piece is the Raf Prada Bomber. But we're moving on to the second piece and I'm pretty sure a lot of my follower base that is into fashion 
is like also into like a similar niche to me because that's how you the videos get recommended and i'm assuming that's how the algorithm works but uh it's this uh item from vujade you guys see it already in the back so i don't really need to like tease it but it's the kimono dyed over shirt from vujade and their kimono collection so it's like oh oh seven oh eight i don't i don't keep up with the numbers it's confusing as hell i just call it the kimono dye collection it's basically all the the black items like where ken like uses a kimono dye to dye in black and so this is the over shirt they dropped super duper sick over shirt it's like the same one as the the white one he dropped except it's now in black and uh a lot more wearable in my opinion because i am a black fiend so anytime there's a black garment of clothing i'm always on it and uh this is definitely one of those pieces that just like caught my eye at the moment but i never really like fully appreciated it until like uh, a homie of mine like had it on a rack and i like put it on and i was like bro <laughs> this is crazy uh i'm not sure if you guys are familiar but vujade has uh pretty decent following in china as well and so a lot of people like ken's shit and so uh this was a piece that is pretty much extinct in the west but in china amongst like a few vd collectors they do have the item and um i picked it up from one of them and uh it is now with me and i will not sell it so don't ask me to sell it you fucks <laughs> but uh yeah this is definitely one of ken's rarer items per se uh but um yeah the kimono dye overall i think it's a very nice like shade of black like, what am i saying like i don't know what how to say it. it's like a really nice dark black and it's a super solid staple uh i have yet to experiment whether there's any dye transfer because this is a relatively new pickup and so i'm gonna wear with caution and like because the the whole idea is it's dyed with like a uh, kimono dye like black black dye essentially right so i don't know if i want to wear any white t-shirt just in case there's like dye transfer and it'll fuck up my white t-shirts so honestly very very clean piece i'm gonna do the spinny thing for you guys but uh yeah i'm not gonna do any b-roll or anything because i ain't i ain't about that but you know you guys can zoom in so i feel like recently vujade is like stepping more towards this direction of quiet luxury and like that era because I guess that's sort of how Ken is feeling nowadays, like that's how he dresses himself. And so VD being like a, like a sort of s extension of Ken himself and like what he's wearing, I guess this is sort of like saying, you know, Ken's into quiet luxury. And so uh, my point is, is that like, you can really tell in like the past, I'd say two collections, two, three collections, you can really see that like Ken is leaning more towards this like minimal, aesthetic whereas in the past it's very streetwear americana like visvim e inspired like you, you know those like crash crash uh work pants and like the bondage cargos and like those sort of thing they're like very very streetwear-esque but nowadays we have like a lot more like toned down and like very how to pull it like elegant and refined pieces that i just like dig so much more than like the streetwear aesthetic nowadays because you know we grow up and it's very nice that this sort of Vujade brand grew up with me, I'd like to say. Because I've been following Ken since like his uh, very, very old days. I've been through like like basically his 001 and 002 drop. And so being able to like sort of have the brand move with me as my style progresses and like my taste changes is like super crazy. This adds to like the sentimental value, I'd say, of having like sort of Ken's pieces be reflective of like how Ken's grown, but also like reflective of how I've grown and how I like to dress. Most definitely, this is one of my favorite pieces from VD so far that I've copped. I have not copped any items from the most recent collection, but I do know some friends in China that come. I'll I'll get to see it when they when they get it in stock and I'll get to like try it on and shit and I'll maybe vlog that and uh, show you guys like each item and then after that I'll decide what to pick up because now I feel like VD size charts are such a such a I don't know I I'm gonna teach you guys this technique of like how I buy a VD and how I determine my sizing it's essentially what would Mario wear so whatever Mario wears i wear so 
VD has always been like great for me in terms of sizing, but like nowadays, like my boy Kim has been saying, like VD is a bit wild in terms of sizing, and I'm not sure what size I exactly. I fit in the range between like two sizes, like M and L, and so I'm just like might as well like wait for the the in person items and like wear it then, and like see what I truly like, and then that way I will get like the perfect like je pair of jeans and that kind of thing so uh that's why I didn't cop any VD stuff but those uh silk impregnated trousers are, are kind of crazy I'm not gonna lie uh I think they're called the Otis and uh very very crazy item and uh I think I might have to like just impulse buy that but yeah <laughs> uh tangents aside uh this is the second item it's the Vujade kimono dai over shirt yeah uh, so for the third item, I'm actually like severely uneducated on this brand. So apologies if I get all the any details wrong, but essentially this brand is called K8. It's by Kada, and uh, from what I know, he's a very very renowned like stylist from Japan, and uh, he's worked with uh, Vujade, of course. That's how I know him. And uh, from what I saw from the Vujade collection, I thought he did the styling was like just like top notch. And so that's that's how I how I learned of him. And so an item that I managed to source, and it's this I call it the wine bag. I honestly don't know what it's called. So I'm so sorry, Keda, if you ever watch this, that I am just like like disrespecting your bag i guess but like I, I love this bag don't get me wrong this is like amazing bag i call it the wine bag because i like put the wine in front and like you carry it it's like super great and uh yeah it's just 100 percent cotton it's like a very thick and durable material and uh this is the hole where you can put like a big ass like wine bottle or like your water bottle in it and it's a very large volume just tote bag or messenger bag or however you want to put it and you can put a shit ton of stuff inside and uh there's really nothing wrong with it and uh this is actually the thing i like most about this bag which kata didn't design this but i put it on it's uh that little cat is from kiki's delivery service and uh yeah i think this sort of bag just like looks so well and it's so versatile you just put it on you're like oh yeah i'm off about on my day carry groceries boom just imagine you're in like paris and you want to like go to that bridge that everyone goes to to drink wine and like chit chat in the evenings you're like you have a bottle of wine you don't want to hold it like a jackass like this so you just like boom put it on and you carry it and it's like so cool i don't i don't know this bag is super well designed and i know that i should probably be more educated with k8 and kata's brand before I like flaunt it saying it's like super great, but I'm saying this bag is super great. I So before before you guys get on me, the bags are super great. I don't own any of the garments in terms of like their coats or their pants or anything. So I'm not sure about that, but from what I hear, they're rather limited. And so if you ever manage to get your hands on K8, then let me know. And if I put you on K8, then you're welcome. <laughs> Yeah, third item, K8, uh, wine bag. <laughs> so I changed some clothes and went for a tea break because it's actually been like a day or two since I've last recorded. So this is the next pickup. This is the Visvum Jumbo Albacore hoodie. It's a very nice like washed white, like off-white color which really like intrigued me at first because I'm used to like the, the crispy white hoodies and they're just like a little bit too clean for me and sometimes I feel like a bit worried when I wear white hoodies because I'm just like so scared to dirty it. So having something that's already like a little bit yellowy and off-whitey is very nice. And uh, of course the integral detail that you guys see here is of course this sort of patch here. It's actually a vintage piece of bandana that they cut out and sewn on and so it feels very different from like the hoodie's construction and also like the materials feel very nice and soft throughout this hoodie i think this is a size three this um, sizing is very japanese so you guys should be aware of that it's a little bit odd if you're used to like american or european sizing so be aware of that but uh, overall i think this is a very soft very plush very premium feeling hoodie that has a very nice wash on it that kind of 
I guess it exemplifies this notion of how it being a very good closet basic and a layering basic. I think this goes with a lot of different pieces just because it's a very blank canvas with like this. It's, it's a very like eye-catching detail here, but overall the hoodie is very minimal, has a very basic construction and silhouette. So of course you see you have there's these metal eyelets right here, metal eyelets, and an interesting detail that you guys might not normally see is that this is i believe a kofu visvum brand patch which is like super cool because uh i think it's super cool at least because uh, kofu is this traditional japanese reparation technique and i think not a lot of brands do it well i guess or do it at all and so visvum is one of the brands that do it i say is one of the the better known brands that do this sort of technique and so yeah uh, here's the passion just like you guys can see it <laughs> and uh, Yeah, there's nothing too too out, out of the ordinary for this It's just a very solid staple that I wear to run errands to just go about my everyday life So yeah, this is my pickup the Visvum Jumbo Albacore <laughs> So for my next pickup, we're moving on from clothing and now we're going to like a bit more of the footwear region this I've actually worn quite a bit already, but this is the Guidi 795 with the Vibram soles, so 795 Vs. I honestly think, oh god, they're so grimy, I'm gonna have to wash my hands later. Uh, these are one of my favorite versions of like, one of my favorite boots, I guess, just because it feels so comfortable to wear. And they're, of course, they're a pain in the ass to lace and also like, Every, the, the thing that everyone talks about about these horse leather laces being a bit brittle is the case and I have been extremely extremely careful when it comes to lacing them and like loosening the, them up every time I have to like wear the, like put them on and take them off so that is a big pain in the ass to like have five minutes dedicated to lacing a pair of shoes but I think this is like one of the sacrifices you have to make for such a timeless and premium feel feeling shoe and um yeah this is just one of the i think greedy's best silhouettes in terms of being a bit understated but yeah they are super heavy so buyers do be aware that i think the most key thing that you guys should take note of is that first uh the laces are brittle they're horse leather laces and they're super duper long so do be aware of that second um horse leather, uh, buy a leather care kit, do those sort of things because you are buying a pair of greedies, you should already know that. Uh, three, uh, I recommend getting the Vibram sole just because it looks cooler and also it will make the shoe a lot more durable. You have to resole them a lot less. And uh, overall, I think, uh, yeah. And also if you don't like super heavy shoes, uh, don't do this because these weigh a fuck ton. And uh, honestly, I think, in terms of sizing because for greedies it's actually like a rough zone in terms of like how to buy uh, what size to buy and for that uh me personally i'm a 44 and a half normally in like jordans and stuff and this is a 43 i believe no sorry this is a 44 and um they fit me just fine uh if you guys uh, want to put in an insole um, i do recommend that like some sort of orthotics uh, that will be fine. It does become like a significant bit snugger. However, I think the orthotics really helps with the, the pair's wearability in terms of like long intervals. Uh, I wore this recently to Shenzhen and I've walked around all day in Guidi's and I have no qualms except for like my leg being a little bit tired. But like, you know, it's just an, another day in the office, another leg day for me. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, yeah, these are honestly one of the, the best boots. And I honestly think that if you're in the market for a more premium boots, I do recommend the 795 Vs, uh, definitely with the Vibram sole, Vibram sole. And so, uh, yeah, the next pickup is a pair of Guidis. Since we're still in the topic of footwear and all, uh, let me just bring out these. These are the Balenciaga Sunday Mules. The, they're called the toe shoes, basically. They look like a toe and uh, they're basically just like a pair of Burks. Uh, mules that uh, you know have toe shapes on them. I think their eye, their the inside is not too comfortable, especially the footbed is a bit hard. 
and uh, I really think they're more of like a fashion piece. Of course, uh, you can wear them all day, and I have done that like several times, like wearing them in long intervals, and they don't hurt too, too bad, honestly. But like, uh, if you were really looking for comfort, purely comfort speaking, just go wear like Yeezy slides or Adidas slides and they'll be like a lot better. But of course, if you're trying to stunt and not hurt the feet too, too much, uh, I think these are still like, I, and uh, honestly, I don't have much to say about them. They're just like toe shoes. I have a story in that like every person I've talked to about whether I should buy them or have told that I bought them have called me like stupid and like <laughs> because uh, they don't really like this toe silhouette. I think it puts a lot of people off. And uh, originally I wasn't too, too into them when Demna showed them off first, but uh, because it actually looked like toe-like when he wore them like early on with like uh, taking a photo with a fan. But now I think like the, the general release that I got in Balenciaga, it's a lot more toned down. Like the toe silhouette isn't that too obvious. And so it adds this like unique flair of like having like a, like a slight toe shape, but also being like not over the top, like seeing the individual toe. So I feel like this is definitely one of like my favorite pickups recently. I wear these all the time to like the grocery store sometimes when i style it up uh with like uh recently i think the most recent fit i could think of was wearing them with the vujra de pl jeans and they go wonderfully and uh, i just think just having a pair of mules is essential i don't have any mules so this is my first pair and uh i think yeah this is my i think in my opinion the best pair of mules over any birkenstock or like the rick birkenstocks and anything like that so i'd say yeah i'm pretty satisfied with the balenci burks and the balenci mule sorry and so yeah i think i'll be sticking with these for the time being and uh i'll update you guys if anything ever happens or if i have any new stories but uh I, think, I believe these have two options they're either the leather version or the suede i chose the suede because uh i saw galax make a video on them and he looked so cool wearing them and also i just think suede looks a lot nicer than the leather version for meals at least because i sort of enjoy birkenstocks when they're also in like the suede material over like the the leather variants because i just don't think they look that good but uh yeah these are the balenci sunday mules and now we're moving on to the last pickup and so the last pickup i was actually wearing the whole time and surprise it's the prada technical cotton hoodie and so what's so special about this hoodie is i don't know what the hell prada did to this but like the material just feels so good like i don't know what the hell this cotton like what they did to it or like what kind of like crazy like cra craftsman like secret technique they use on on like refining the cotton I, I i don't know i'm not like that deep into like how how the uh, garments are made well at least i didn't ask i just kind of sort of like looked at it i was like oh cool hoodie and then i put it on and like i felt the materials and i got to like sort of appreciate like the build quality of the jacket i was just like shit this is what it looks like. It has uh, snap closures right here. It has a big pouch or like pockets right here, side pockets, so you can put. And then there's of course enameled Prada triangle. And so yeah, this is the jacket. I mean, it's honestly a very, very simple silhouette. The thing that blew me away is just purely based off of the fact that it has like super duper crazy like feel and like, just, I can't describe it, you guys probably have to feel it in store i'm sure you guys can like go to your nearest prada store just like you know go up go up to the jacket go like <laughs> yeah that's a bit weird but beyond the point this this just feels very luxurious and very comfortable and uh nowadays my fashion sense has sort of not devolved but like you know i'll, I'll just say refined to a sense that i prioritize like material feel a lot of times and like s the fit of like how how the jacket fits and like how it feels is super important to me whereas in the past maybe like how it looks would be the most important but now it's sort of like of course there's all three elements need to be there for me to buy it but like i feel like this is just such a good everyday item I find myself defaulting to a lot of the time and so yeah, it's just very nice. I, I, I don't know what to say. It's a very basic piece from Prada. And uh, you can pick it up in most Prada stores. I'm pretty sure they're still in stock. 
uh, go in there, try it on. And if you like it, then uh, tell me. <laughs> I know you guys might be confused about why I'm titling a video about pickups losing things. And A, it's because it's a Ken Jima reference. So if you guys know, you guys know. Yeah, come on. I mean, All right, I lost my there's people already know. And B, it's because um, I guess how I do things is like my wardrobe is like a rotation. There's like a constant changing of like pieces and stuff are moving in and out of my rotation. And so there are pieces that of course I naturally let go or demotes to like pajama realm. This is one of the pieces that I'm letting go. And uh, the reason for that is just, although I really, really like the DVD logo, I don't appreciate the fact that it's fucking this big on my chest, like tattooed on like a Supreme box logo. And, um, like the the t-shirt's like super comfortable don't get me wrong like ken did his thing and it's like comfortable and shit but like besides the point i find myself like rarely opting for this tee just because of the fact that the vd is so big and so eye-catching that it kind of like doesn't give off the right vibes I'll, I'll put it that way yeah it doesn't give off like the vibe i wanted to give and so that's why I'm not gonna be wearing this in my outfit rotation anymore, and hence I'm letting it go. The same can be said about this Y3 oversized reversible bomber. I was super, super into, actually no, let me, let me tell the story. So originally how I got this piece is that uh, there was a Y3 sample sale in Hong Kong. And so I managed to, you know, pick up, I, I managed to go to the, 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 the sort of sample sale and I saw a lot of pieces that were like super duper discounted. And so a part of me was kind of FOMOing and the fact that I might never get to like cop Y3 samples at this price ever again. So I just like impulse bought a lot of stuff and this was definitely one of the pieces that I've regretted because this bomber like goes all the way like like dick level below dick level and it, it just fucks up the proportions so hard you can't wear like anything without looking three foot tall and it just doesn't work out for me and so that's why i think this y3 bomber like no matter how good the quality is how cheap i got it for i think i never gravitate towards this bomber because it's just like the proportions aren't right and i feel like proportions are so important in making outfits look good and this just isn't it like i may be 180 like centimeters tall but like with this bomber i swear i look like 160 at most and so this is why i have to let go of this bomber it's actually reversible the other side is very tacky so i never wear it on the other side so this is the main reason why uh i picked up the raf one because I used to have like two bombers, but I'm letting go of both of them in, in, in light of making space for one gray old bomber that I can actually wear like religiously. And so yeah, letting go of the Y3 bomber. Those are my pickups. Uh, thank you so, so much for watching my video. And yeah, I think all of you guys should start losing things because overconsumption is bad and uh a little announcement i want to make i'm actually going to europe for exchange uh germany to be precise but i'll start the my per exchange journey with a europe tour so we're going to paris first and then we're gonna sort of work our way around until eventually we go to germany so yeah so europe's super exciting especially for fashion head like me and uh, a lot of videos are planned and just, you know, outfit videos, dressing in Paris, food. I'm, of course, uh, people who know my original content style, I'm a vlogger first, and then I'm a fashion head second. So I think like living life is so important. Like I feel like fashion's just sort of an extension to like your daily life. So I feel like, of, I want to look fly while doing fun things. I don't just want to look fly doing nothing is, 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 is what I'm trying to say. So yeah, Europe's going to be crazy exciting for me. It's going to be a very eye-opening experience to live in somewhere besides Asia. And uh, I'll vlog my experience there. So you guys will definitely be with me. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you guys so, so much for watching me lose things and also pick things up. And uh, yeah, bye. See you next time.